Hey guys, it's Erin here with Tug Dogs, and I am here with Louie. Do you guys recall, Louie is the dog we have in for training, who is from NorCal Boxer Rescue, who has some pretty serious confinement and separation anxiety. You can look back at our page and find some initial video of me working with him, getting him more comfortable with the crate. Prior to arriving here, Louie was actually crated in a crate just like this, heavy duty welded wire, and he was actually able to break through and bend the wire and escape. So we have been working on some desensitization and counter conditioning, which just means we're getting him used to being confined and separated in very small bursts, making it positive. Why would we even bother working with crating? The reason that we have to do that is because Louie is not okay left loose in the house. So he will become destructive, self-injurious, try and jump out windows, try and scratch and bite at doors. So we have to use containment as part of our training to keep him safe, to keep the house from getting demolished. It's also an important part of his training to work on feeling okay being separated. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of desensitization and counter conditioning for you so that those of you who are struggling with a dog who has separation anxiety can practice this at home. So when I first put Louie in, right before the video started, I sprinkled some treats around the crate. I'm using really high value treats. that are little pieces of meat, all right? So those are really good because they're moist and they're smelly and they really attract the dog's attention. So you need to find something that's super high value for your dog. And you may even want to do this training exercise prior to their meal time, so they're extra hungry. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop in a couple of treats and I'm going to practice moving to the door and see how Louie does with just me acting like I'm going to leave the room. All right, sprinkle in a couple of treats. Here I go. Great, Louie didn't react. So I'm gonna drop some more treats and I'm just gonna practice that for a minute. I'm touching the doorknob and opening and closing the door. No big deal, Louie's pretty comfortable. He's still searching for food, which we love. Now I'm gonna start going outside of the door, but not closing it. So I'm in the hallway, coming back, dropping some food. That's pretty cool stuff. So what I'm doing here is I'm changing Louie's association from, oh no, I'm gonna be stuck in the kennel for a long period of time to, oh no big deal, Aaron comes and goes, I get rewards in here and making it a really positive place to be. All right, because Louie's doing so well, I'm gonna start leaving the room and closing the door behind me. When we work with these kind of cases, it's really important that this work be gradual. So I'm gonna close the door and I'll open it right again. One of the big mistakes that a lot of the well-intentioned owners that we work with make is they rush results. They get so excited to see some progress that they wanna jump too many steps. And if you trigger your dog's anxiety in this kind of situation, you'll actually be farther from your goal. So I make sure that I do things in baby steps, right? Checking to see if, oh, careful. Thank you, he was trying to take that treat pretty hard. Careful, good boy, these are pretty high value. Um, checking to make sure that the dog feels comfortable. Because Louie seems quite comfortable, this time when I step out of the room, I'm going to close the door, I'm gonna count to five and then come back in. Awesome, I didn't hear any pawing or biting or complaining, so that's really great. Same thing again. Lovely. This is a great way for your dog to earn their dinner too. You wanna be careful when you're using all of these treats that you're not overfeeding and making your dog overweight. Not an issue with Louie because he arrived into training emaciated 
after being neglected prior to the shelter stay. All right, because Louie is doing so well with about five seconds, I'm gonna increase the time. So now I'm gonna go to 10 seconds. Awesome, I didn't hear signs of trouble. I see a dog who's still busy looking for his treats. Love that. We're gonna do a couple more rounds at 10 seconds. Originally thought was scary and anxious. All right, so we're going to go one step further on this next one. I'm going to go out for 30 seconds. Let's see how he does with that. are getting the idea here. Oops, looks like the camera was blurry for a minute. Uh, my dog training skills are far better than my technology skills, I must say. But hopefully you guys are getting the idea here of how we would do this. Okay, so we would proceed in little bursts going what we call under threshold. That means trying to find the time that doesn't trigger Louie to feel anxious or nervous about being in separate or being confined. And then as we proceed and practice this through repetition, will be able to slowly and gradually increase the amount of time that he can stay comfortably by himself. And we have a lot of other stuff that we're doing behind the scenes to also help Louis live successfully and overcome his anxiety. But this is one of the most important training steps that we will take with Louis. When we first started, Louis wouldn't even go into a crate. Now he will happily go in for food. When we continued on over the last week of practice, he would be immediately anxious, panting, spinning, drooling, whining, pacing, wouldn't take food, all those kinds of things. Now we're thirsty. Um, which were all signs of very extreme anxiety. And that was while he was on two different anti-anxiety medications. This Louie, I have weaned off of both of those anti-anxiety medications. So this is Louie without being medicated. Now you'll notice he's busy drinking water out of the bowl. That can be a sign of anxiety, but for Louie, it's probably more likely a result of a kidney infection. So he came in with a kidney infection and he's been on medication and antibiotics for that. And he has a recheck on Monday, so we'll see where he's at with that but he's pretty interested in drinking a lot of water. So hopefully the vet can get that squared away and tell us if this excessive water drinking is a part of that or if it's a part of his anxiety. He does it regardless of whether he's with me or confined. So I think it's much more likely that it's a health issue, but we'll get answers next week. All right, so if you have a dog who has separation anxiety, just be aware that 
separation anxiety and really any form of anxiety, there's not quick fixes. You have to take these really critical baby steps to make sure that your dog feels safe and secure because it's not just about controlling what their body is doing, the barking and the you know whining and the breaking out. It's about helping their mind to feel relaxed, calm, and comfortable in a situation that used to trigger a lot of anxiety. We'll be sharing Louis's journey as he continues to learn about how to relax and be confident even when he's away from humans. Hope you guys have gotten some good stuff from this video. And as always, happy training.